guys, I'm John. And I'm Juanita. And you are students of Ghana Christian International High School. And we urge you all to subscribe to his Love TV. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Hello there. You are welcome to His Cup TV. Before we begin with our discussions today, I would like to remind you to subscribe to the channel in case you have not done so. And um, if you have subscribed to, we thank you very much for your support. Um, today, I wanted to look at the effect of the Anglo Asante Wars. Okay, the effect of the Anglo Asante Wars in the 19th century. And um, this topic um, is part of the British Asante Wars uh, that we have been looking at. Um, so, in our previous um, video or discussions, we looked at the um, reasons for the um, um, frequent Anglo Asante Wars. So, we said that about 10 wars were fought um, during the 19th century uh, between the uh, British and then the Asantes. And so we looked at some of the reasons that accounted for the various wars because the British fought the Asantes more than any um, other political, um, sorry, more than any other ethnic group um, in Ghana uh, or in the Gold Coast now today modern Ghana. And so what um, reason accounted for this? Why did the British um, um, fight the Asantes more than any other ethnic groups in the then Gold Coast, now Ghana? And we established so many um, um, reasons for that war. And so if you happen not to have watched um, that lesson, I would include the link in the description. You have to go and watch that video as well. Even if possible, you have to go and watch that video. If you have not watched before, you come and watch um, this one. Because the issues that we are going to talk about or discuss here, um, you might not be able to understand well. Sh um, should you not um, watch the previous video lesson. Good. So let's look at what we are supposed to do today. So we are going to look at the effect of these wars, the Anglo-Asante wars, the frequent wars between the Asante and the Asante Empire and the British, what were some of the effect um, of that war on the British or on the Asante or on the other ethnic groups that were involved in general. So basically, that is what we'll be looking at in this video. Good. So let's go in there and um, look at our lesson objectives for today so our our objectives our lesson objectives for today will be that by the end of this lesson you should be able to um, examine the effect of the anglo asante wars in the 19th century so what was the effect of the various um, wars that was fought between the asante empire and the british uh, so let's go in there and look at some of the effects. Good. So one of the effects of the Anglo-Asante War, and this, I would say, is the major effect of the Anglo-Asante Wars, or the war between the British and the Asante Empire. So one of the effects was that the wars led to the breakup of the Asante Empire. So the Asante Empire, you know, crashed. Um, it was reduced to a smaller size as we know it today. And if you read about the Asante Empire, you realize that they occupied areas like Wasa. Okay, areas like Wasa, the Intura area. Gunja area, um, Dagomba area, Abkrache, um, Jaman, and then also the Achim people. Now, look at where Gunja is. And Gunja can be found in the northern part of Ghana. Dagomba found in the northern part of Ghana. 
So interestingly, it looks like the Asante Empire, as we know today, consisted, I mean, consisted of um, 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 lands in the northern part of the country, including the Ashanti region area, including the eastern region area, and even some part of central region. And this empire extended even beyond the boundaries of modern-day Ghana. It extended to far away in Côte d'Ivoire. Okay, and so that should tell you how big the empire was. Now, when you hear an empire, an empire is different from a state. Empire consists of many, 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 many states. So, the Wasa state, okay, the Dentra state, the Gunja state, uh, the Krachi state, the German state, uh, the Achim state, all of them were part of the empire. So Asante or the Asante Hindu ruled all these areas. However, because of the um, um, frequent wars between the British and then the Asante Empire, what happened was that whenever there is a war, um, especially in 1826, the Dodua War, and then in 1874, the Sagaranti War. Now, whenever there is a war, what happened is that there is a treaty signed after the war. Okay, so a treaty is signed after every war. And the clauses or the terms in this treaty forces Asante to give independence to some of the Vasa states that it had. Now, all these states that there are more, all these states that you've seen here were all Vasa states of the of the Asante Empire. I mean, Adanse, um, for instance, was also part of the Asante Empire. The Asin area there were all part of the Asante Empire. I mean, for instance, in, after the 1874 um, war, known as the Sagaranti War, the Formula Treaty was signed. Okay? And that treaty forced the Asante Empire to give independence to some of the some of her Vasa states okay and once you are forced to give independence to some of your Vasa states what happens is that your state your empire reduces in sizes and this is what the war brought to the Asante people or the Asante nation all right and so because of the treaty signed after Every war, it reduces the empire, the size of the empire. And today, when you want to look at the Asante Empire, it's 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 more or less like limited to only the Ashanti region of modern day Ghana, but it extended even to the northern part of the country, to the eastern part of the country, to the western part of the country, to the central of core region, and even to um, Ivory Coast. Okay. And so because of the treaties that were signed, um, the, the, these wars led to a breakup of the Asante Empire. And so today when you say Asante Empire, people you know, will question that empire because today we can't say it's an empire. Um, it's a small now, small state, small town. Good. So let's look at the next one. Um, we're also saying that the war led to the unity of the um, Fanti states, the unity of the Fanti states. The war brought about the unity of the Fanti states. You know, the Fanti states um, have never been united like the Asante did um, with the help of Okonfo Anoche. The Fanti states have, have um, even today, have remained autonomous, and Mabo state is independent of the Guafu state, you understand? Mankesim is a different thing altogether. So they don't have that unified political system like that of the Asante, whereby the Ejusu uh, queen or, or, or king or, or chief is under the Asante Hine. You understand? And bear in mind that Asante Hine is not a king of any I mean, he's not a king of Kumasi. He's a king of Asante nation. And Asante nation includes Ajoso, you know, 
I mean, all those areas, um, Swami, um, Bantima. So he is not a king of one state. But if you go to the, among the Fanti people, they all have different, different, different kings or chiefs in different states. And all these states are never united. Okay? And so there, there, there is no paramount chief, even today, among the Fanti states. But see something. The Asante's invasion of the Fante, we are all aware that Asante uh, constantly invaded the, uh, uh, um, the southern states, especially the Fantes, because of some economic um, reasons. We will look at that in our subsequent um, lesson. These um, subsequent invasions became an eye-opener for the Fante and other coastal states about the overriding importance of forging a united front. Don't forget the Asante's empire was formed based on unity. So if these people have been able to unite and to invade us, and because of I mean, their unity, they have become powerful because now their armies are very, very powerful because of the fact that each of the states under the empire brings um, soldiers to fight for the Asante army. And so if we stay individually as a, as a, as a, as a state, when Anmabo is being attacked, Mankesim has nothing to do with that. A Guafu or a Futu has nothing to do with that. When that happens, it means that we are all going to be conquered by the Asante or by the ever-powerful Asante Empire. So these um, subsequent um, wars led to the unity of the Asante, of the Fanti people. You know, interestingly, the Fantis were relying on the British for protection whenever um, Asante invades them. They, they relied on the British because one of the reasons for the frequent wars, you, if you recall in our previous um, lesson, we said that the British feared, they wanted to maintain law and order, you know, they, I mean, for security reasons, they feared that they themselves were not even safe should they allow the Asantis to attack the Fante. And so the British always supported the Fante whenever the Asante invaded. However, somewhere in 1863, there was an Asante invasion and the British counter invasion delayed. And all this made the Fantis aware that it is better we unite or we perish. And so in the course of that, um, the Fanti Confederation, which we will look at it um, later, was formed in 1863 after a certain invasion that the British did not come to the aid of the, of the Fantis. And so they formed the Fanti Confederation in 1863 in order to protect um, um, their interests, you know, as a people. And so it led to the Fanti states, um, uh, the unity of the Fanti states, but um, the, even the Fanti Confederation um, could not last for long. And we will look at that um, in our subsequent um, lessons. We will look at the aims and everything about the Fanti Confederation. Good. So I think these two points are well explained. Good. Let's take a look at the the next one. Another effect of the Anglo Asante Wars was that it led to the exile of Nana Prempe the first and other Asante chiefs. So Nana Prempe was not the only one who was exiled. Some chiefs and some people were also exiled um, with him. Now you see um, after the partition of Africa which I have it here. You can check on the on the on the page um, on the channel. I have it there on partition of Africa. After the partition of Africa, um, the British had a renewed uh, military invasion. You know, at this time they they came to conquer, or they wanted to conquer the Asantes once and for all. And so, one of the things that they would do in order to 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 subdue the Asante Empire. Um, or to, to make the Asante Empire a colony was one, after the war, they exiled some of the kings and, and queens of the Asante 
empire okay and so that is what um um i mean happened so as a result of the many wars fought an emperor who was then who refused um for certain um reasons because he was accused of not paying the war indemnity of 1874 that is the war and then he was also accused of not accepting the british um, um residents you know in kumasi and 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 other 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 funny funny um reasons he was exiled to uh, an island known as the seychelles island and this island is somewhere it's a tiny island um located uh, at the tip of i think um west africa is 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 it in west africa no it's a it's a tiny island somewhere somewhere in 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 in, in east african area there where we have Madagascar area there. In 1896, that island was also a British um, colony and he was exiled by Sir Maxwell. Okay, so Sir Maxwell, who was then the British um, um, governor, exiled an Prempe to that area. And he was, he didn't go there alone. He was, he, other 14 chiefs were arrested, including 13 women, uh, 13 children and also about 12 attendants were also added to Nana Prempe to go and serve him um, in Seychelles Island. And this image you see here, it says Nana King Prempe the first on board ship bound for exile in Seychelles. Uh, Prempe was then was the 13th king of the Asante. So this is when he was in the ship uh, going to the Seychelles Island. And that is what you see him sitting in there and this image you find down here also um, is a picture that was taken at I mean at Seychelles Island uh, so this uh, Prempe here and some uh, of course the British um, governor and some other people over there and you see I mean in 1901 after the I mean after the war again after that war, like I said, because of the partition, I mean, this time the British were leaving no stone unturned. So in 1901, after the Asantua War in 1900, another group of Asante party were also sent to the Seychelles Island, and namely Ya Asantua, who was the queen the mother of Ejusso, my, my place, and then also uh, 15 chiefs, uh, two men, and then also four attendants were also um, captured and also sent to the Seychelles Island to join Nana Prempe. Interestingly, um, most of these people from 1918 um, 96 um, uh, to 1924, a lot of them died. Yes, and died in the Seychelles Island. Nana Prempe was the only one who returned um, the, all the people that he took from the Gold Coast or from the Asante Empire to the Seychelles Island. It was only Nana Prempe who returned back alive and he was returned somewhere in 1924. And his return was mainly because of the indirect rule um, system that the British had wanted to implement. And so they needed the chiefs at this time. So they had to return um, Nana Prempe to the uh, to the Asante Empire. Even though whilst he was in exile, he was still a king of the Asante Empire. So they never appointed any king in the Asante Empire from 1896 to uh, um, 1924. And Apremper still ruled as the as the king. So that was also one effect of the of the various Anglo I mean Asante wars. So you see, after the war. They captured some of the Asante um, 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 leaders to um, Seychelles Island in exile. And so today, if you go to the Seychelles Island, there is a whole community, the whole um, descendants of these Asante people living in Seychelles Island. And the Asante Hine went there some time ago uh, to pay a visit to Seychelles Island. Good. So the war also led to insecurity and also uncertainty. And this is the most uh, um, common effect of wars. So the British, in particular, you know, they became ambivalent. That the British were not decisive 
uh, as to whether to remain in Ghana or to leave the coast entirely because they had fears that Asante, whom they considered as well like, could strike or start war again in the latest opportunity. So you see, the Asante fought the the British so much so that the British became um, fed up. Um, they became frustrated uh, in their attempt to introduce indirect trade and also to colonize the um, 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 the Gold Coast. At this time, don't forget, at this time, the Gold Coast had been colonized in 1874. However, the Asante Empire was still misbehaving, you understand? So they, they became fed up. They became fed up because they couldn't, they couldn't control the Asante Empire. Okay, they couldn't control them. So they were ambivalent as to, to stay there or to go. So they feared, they feared for their safety. Let's look at the next one. Um, the war also led to the annexation of Southern Ghana. Okay, so let's take a look at this map here. The war led to the annexation of Southern Ghana. Now look at this map here. So when you hear Gold Coast, Gold Coast, this is the area that was referred to as the Gold Coast. Okay, this area. This is where we refer to as the Gold Coast or Southern Ghana. When you hear Southern Ghana, you'll be hearing it in our subsequent lessons. This area is what we refer to as the Gold Coast or Southern Ghana. Now, the British um, colonized this area in 1874. So the Gold Coast here, it was not the whole of this present-day Ghana that was called the Gold Coast. The Gold Coast only referred to this area, the southern states. Here was an Ashanti Empire. This whole area here was referred to as Ashanti Empire. This place was referred to as the Togoland. Okay, Togoland. And here was referred to as the Northern Territories. So, I mean, in fact, really, if you look at, if you, if you, if you really want to be critical, you would say that, Ghana was not called the Gold Coast, no. It was only a part of Ghana, today Ghana, which was called a Gold Coast. But these wars led to the annexation of the southern state and also um, um, declaring Asante as a protectorate. Okay, so for this reason, uh, the British sought protection uh, against any uh, possible uh, repressor from the attacks. This relationship between the coastal states and the people uh, paved way for the annexation of the southern part of Ghana into the British crown in 1874. So, you see, I, I already indicated that the Fanti state relied on the British for protection. Okay, and so because anytime Asante invades or invaded, the southern state relied on the British for protection. And so, because of that, the British signed you know, so many treaties with the with the Fanti state. And these treaties were 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 for protection. Um I mean for instance the bond of eighteen forty four um was signed. They were mainly for protection. But the British took it as a way of the southern states um surrounding their um sovereignty to the British. And so they colonized the British in eighteen seventy four. Now as a result of the subsequent wars, so in eighteen seventy four the Gold Coast here was part of the British Crown, so it was formerly a British colony. And so the Gold Coast was even colonized or was added to the British colony even before the Asante Empire became a colony. Okay, and so the Ashanti Empire at this time had not been colonized. However, after the Yasantua War in 1900, uh, and the exiles of and the exile of Prempe and Ya Asantua. I mean, Asante was virtually left weakened. Um, there was nobody, you know, to lead them, and so Asante um, f um finally became a protectorate in 1901, and it was added to the British um crown. And um, you know, the Northern Territories were already under the Asante Empire. So once Asante Empire was colonized, automatically. The northern territories have become part of the British um, colony, okay. And the British wanted to 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 protect these areas because of the French who were somewhere here, upper Volta, 
that is uh, present day Burkina Faso. All right. Yeah. And so because of the wars, finally, um, the whole of this um, um, territory from the Northern Territory, Ashanti Colony and the Gold Coast were finally brought into the British Crown. And by 1901, um, the whole of the present day Ghana was colonized. Uh, with the exception of the Togoland, which was somewhere, uh, you know, uh, mandated um, territory. Good. So let's look at more. Uh, so the next point is that the war also led to the establishment of um, British rule in Ghana. Of course, so if um, um, these areas have been annexed, then um, it paved way for the British to establish um, their rule. So um, they abandoned the policy of non-interference in local um, politics. So you remember when uh, McLean, uh, George McLean came, he was asked to not to interfere after 1826, after the, the Dodo War in 1826, uh, the British became fed up and, and the British Parliament recommended that they withdraw from the I mean, from the Gold Coast, but because of McLean who came to do one or two things, the British had to come back again and to interfere. So initially, uh, they had a policy of non-interference because they were fed up. However, because of the wars that they waged against the Asante, especially in the 1874 uh, and then the 1900 war, because of that, they became deeply involved Okay, in, in the political affairs of the states in Ghana and therefore um, they it paved way for the establishment of a British rule okay good 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 so I think um, we've had a very nice conversation you know this issue is the history of the uh, Asante Empire is so vast you know it's so vast uh, yes so um, please subscribe to the channel if you have any um topic that you want us to look at please you can write it in the comment section and uh, we will do that for you thank you very much for your time try your hands on that work too as well it's got tv first of all it goes bye